should have looked for something though in this video. I'm gonna show you in a second. Right there. So what's still in there? You know, 150 years later, you still have the accordion. You still have the, and you still have the drums. So it gets so much more stuff put on top. On top. That looks like a rap video or a hip hop video, but the uh, the core is still that merengue that was started, you know, by those people 150 years ago. So that's the history of that music and how it came to be. So I told you that dancing was very important. So let's see, how do you dance merengue? Let's see. So it's very simple actually, it's two steps. Watch their feet. It's only two steps. Yeah. It's very different than the type they were dancing in the 50s, right? Mm -hmm. The modern dance has mm -hmm. changed. The music has changed. The dancing has changed. So that's my idea. The second style of music I want to talk to you about is bachata. So bachata is also native to the Dominican Republic. So it started there. But it came after Merengue. It appeared at the beginning of the 20th century, so the 1900s. But Merengue was always associated with poor people. I'm sorry, bachata was always associated with low-class people. So you saw merengue, it started in the countryside, and it came to the big cities, and the people took merengue and they made it into their own thing. Merengue became the national music of the Dominican Republic. But bachata was also always associated with low-class people. It was always associated with criminal people or poor people or things like that. Um, the original name of bachata is amarque, which means bitter music. So, like for example, in the America, we have the blues. <clears throat> bachata is the blues of the Dominican Republic. So, mm -hmm. sad topics. A lot of the lyrics have to do with women. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of the lyrics have to do with alcohol. Mm -hmm. A lot of the lyrics have to do with sex. A lot of the lyrics have to do with you know things that aren't that high society didn't want to hear in their music. Mm -hmm. And that's why that music always stayed associated with low-class people. Um, and the instruments that were used were similar to the ones in merengue, but they were used differently. So the drum became the bongos. And the uh, accordion was replaced by the guitar. And maracas were added. Maracas were added for that sound. So the first bachata to be recorded was in 1961. But bachata didn't start, on, it started in the beginning of the 19th century. So if it started in, 19, on, in the 19th century, why wasn't it recorded until 1961? Because no one wanted to record bachata. No one wanted to put it on a CD, you know? People didn't think it was worth listening to. It was just music for, like, you know, poor people. But the first bachata single was um, recorded in 61, and this is actually the first bachata song to ever be recorded. So you can tell the sound is different. Look at the car in here now. things change in the um,
the seventies it was banned from the radio. People couldn't listen to it in the seventies because of the lyrics. You could only go to a bar and listen to it. You have to go to a you know you have to go to Katamachi to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to listen to it. It's a lot of um, metaphors, metaphors for things that are sexual. You can't really say them, so you have to make up. You have to make up metaphor for it. So he's talking about he wants to get married because he can't be by himself. But basically, what that meant is he wants to go get married for one night, for a one night marriage. <laughs> So he has a marriage, a new marriage every day. That's what he said. A new marriage. <laughs> so in the 80s and 90s, it became mainstream. So it was okay. People started, it was too popular. You know, pe the society tried to hold it down, but you couldn't hold it down anymore. People said they wanted to listen to this. And it changed, and new instruments also, like in merengue, were added. So you added things like uh, the electric guitar was added. As you can hear, the guitar is different here. The sound is different. This is from the 80s. But it's funny because you can still see that I don't have any live performances here. Why don't I have live performances? Because they weren't being invited to the, to the TV shows. The Marenke guys were on TV since the 50s. But these guys, they weren't on TV until later on, because it wasn't accepted. So his woman betrayed him with his best friend. She went with his best friend. And he says, I only have one thing to say to my best friend, is that she's going to play the same card on you that she played on me. With the same coin that she paid me, one day she'll pay you. So the same thing she did to me, she's going to do to you. <laughs> There's the lyrics. This is from the 90s. Who has to play, I have to fight? I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to look at the woman that I want. So you can tell the lyrics are different from in merengue. In merengue, it was more like just dancing and not really, but this is very emotional. This is the kind of music you listen to when people would drink and they would go to the bar and drink and listen to this and complain to their friends. And very popular music. In 2000, Bachata though, became, it left the Dominican Republic, and it became an uh, international thing. So about many countries now were listening to Bachata. It, it was very popular. And it's funny, because today, Bachata is the most popular song, uh, music in the Dominican Republic. It makes the most money, it sells the most records. So this is a song from the early 2000s. Um, yeah, let's listen to it. So that's the setting where you would listen to bachata. It would be like a, a bar or, you know, things like that. Like something like this. But that's like uh, merengue? No, this is to the beat. There's, there's, there's three steps in this. <laughs> it doesn't make sense though. Because like... After World War II, people, they were happy with the flourishing year of economy and stuff, so maybe they were happy and they were listening to merengue. But then things started to decline, and more and more economically it became more difficult some people, so maybe they more like, they accepted more than bachata, and they start left, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 the bachata became more accepted later on, yeah. but um, there was still that government 
societal, societal yeah. expectation of yeah. what Dominican society should be. Yeah. And for them, Dominican society should be like very European yeah. and very like high class and their yeah. ballroom merengue and things like that. When this bachata came in with these lyrics and things like that, it was still, the Dominican Republic is a very conservative country. Yeah. You know, still to this day, very conservative. So society was like, eh, that's not for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Um, I'm going to show you a very recent video of what bachata has become in the present. So this is a video that came out uh, last year. And just to show you how popular bachata has become around the world. This video has 560 million views on YouTube. Half a billion. So, it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is the most famous bachata artist right now in the Dominican Republic. Number one. His name is Romeo Santos. Watch their feet. It's more complicated than merengue. It's a four step dance instead of two. And I want to show you some lyrics from. Uh, a popular bachata song, so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. So, I'm mujer, tu cuerpo me hace falta ya, tus labios mi refugio que me dejan que me muere tanto de sal. So, oh woman, I'm already missing your body. Your lips are my refuge that have me drunk from so much kissing. It doesn't sound good in English, but in Spanish it's, it rhymes very well. <clears throat> tu diste mi oportunidad, y si no estás conmigo, todo va muriendo, no puedo soñar. Your smile is my opportunity. Opportunity for what? <laughs> And if you're not with me, everything dies. I can't breathe. So that's the kind of lyrics that are very typical, typical of bachata. And the reason why it was so popular, and also not so popular. <laughs> and the last thing I want to show you is something I found online. Uh, it's pretty funny. And I, I kind of think it kind of shows that the Dominican Republic, its culture has gone around the world. Uh, it's something I found from Japanese television. So please enjoy this last video. <laughs> so I think it has to do with baseball, I'm not sure. <laughs> so that's the merengue they're dancing. They're not really dancing it how they're supposed to, but they're dancing. Talking about baseball game or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> Gracias a Dios. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. So you learned a little bit about the music and where it comes from and the history. And uh, if you guys ever want to travel to a beautiful beach, make it a book. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions or no? Okay. Of the, uh, your presentation, I saw some uh, some people wearing costumes like Halloween. Yeah. What is it? Well, those are traditional costumes. Oh. I can show you the picture again. Mm. Um, oh, you mean during the video? Oh no, not during the video. Oh, because mm? during the video Maybe. there were some people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's something called carnival. Yes. Uh, which is like a big festival they have during at, at February 27th, which is Independence Day.
Jesus. And people, it's some, it comes from African culture. So people dress in these costumes and then they just. Uh, it's almost like uh, in Brazil, where they have the big costumes or something like that. So it's similar to that. Uh, only Independence Day do you have carnival. Which is Singapore? Only Independence Day. Independence Day is carnival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a celebration that people dress. And, Oh, the dress? Yeah. That's a trick. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, in this? So, the dress here? So, the dress style is traditional, uh, maybe Spanish dresses that women used to wear. And then they just add the colors of the Dominican flag. So they usually wear for like uh, traditional like Independence Day or if the kids have a special like presentation in school. So the style is traditional Spanish and then they add the colors of the Dominican flag. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what do you know? And uh, yeah, very, uh, very traditional. Hi guys. I can't say clearly about the independent things. Like, like Haiti was took over French. France? Yeah. yeah, I'll show you the map. They speak French and then. Um, so, Dominican Republic, the whole island was native people, right? Native people, the entire yes. island. And then in 1492, Columbus came right. and he started a, a Spanish colony right, right where Dominican Republic is uh -huh. on, this, on this side. Yes. But, you know, back then, they. They had to explore and they had to fight the, the natives and everything. So they were a very small colony. The French came and they started their own colony on the other side, where Haiti. Which is Haiti. Yeah. The Spanish, they said they owned the entire island. Right. But they, they only said that. You really can't mm. stop somebody else from doing whatever they want mm. to do. You know? So the French came and started their own colony. So. The French imported many, many slaves, many African people, to work uh, as plantations, in plantations in Haiti. But the Dominican Republic is more mountainous. mountainous. There's more mountains than Haiti. So the agriculture there is less than in Haiti. So what they did is more cattle ranching, cows and meat and things like that. So they imported, they imported a lot of slaves also, the Spanish, but not so many as the French because the need for agriculture was less than in Haiti. <clears throat> so at, at one point in Haiti, there were so many slaves that it was probably maybe 100 slaves for every French person. So they realized, you know, why are we letting this happen? So they had a revolution, and they kicked out the French. And um, they started their country called Haiti. But the other side was still a, a Spanish colony. So they were afraid that the Spanish were going to try and come. So they invaded Dominican Republic first. And the whole island became Haiti. The whole island was Haiti. But the people in Dominican Republic were a different culture. They spoke Spanish, and they were Catholic, and they were more European. So they decided they wanted to be their own country. And they fought the, ha the Haitians, and they started their own country in uh, 1844. So that's the history of that, 1844. So they, uh, so the whole island was Haiti from 1822 until 1844. Between 22 years. Uh, yeah. However, Haiti got independent in 1803 or something. 1803, yeah, but they didn't invade the Dominican Republic. Okay, so they stay. Okay. Yeah, until later. Uh, they were afraid that the Spanish were going to use yeah. that as a base, or the French were going to use that as a base to retake mm. that side of the island. Okay. Haiti speak. French and Dominican Republic speak. In Haiti, they speak a mix of French and African language, which is called Creole. Creole. I think it's. I think you might be able to understand if you speak French. I think you may. It's different. Yeah, I do, but I need to get used to it because I went to Reunion Island, but like it's quite different. Different. I mean, yeah. And yeah, in Dominican Republic, they speak Spanish. And then those two countries are still. Fighting or not friendly at all? Uh, bad relations. Mm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Almost like Korea, Japan. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So the closer, the closer you are, the more you, for some reason, I don't know why the world is that way. Yeah. And uh, when Heidi had that earthquake, mm -hmm. when Heidi had that earthquake, mm -hmm. 
The main character like nothing happened at all. Nothing. Uh, nothing at all. Mm -hmm. And helping, not ha helping. Yeah, yeah. The Dominican Republic was the first country to send uh, ambulances, and because the Dominican Republic is a poor country, but compared to Haiti, it's super rich. Compared, Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So um, many Haitians come to Dominican Republic illegally. They cross the border, and that's why there's tension. That's why there's bad feelings. Because many Dominican people think that Haiti, Haitians are coming and taking Dominican money because they just come illegally and do things like that. But they're very poor, so they have no option, you know. I mean, Dominican Republic has jobs, it has food, and things like that. So that's what, that's what causes the tension, really. And then you, you two people look like almost the same, and it's difficult to realize. Yeah, I mean, there's people who look the same. Right. But Until you speak. But there's more of a, in the Dominican Republic, there's more range. So in the Dominican Republic, you can have someone who's very dark skinned, very, very dark skinned. Or you can go all the way to blonde, blue eyes. That's a whole range. Whereas in Haiti, like 95% of the population is African. They look African. So. And, the, and the way you speak, when someone says something, you can tell immediately. Where they're from. That's the difference. And they have, they've, they've had a lot of conflict. In the past, in the history, like wars and things. Yeah. So there's a lot of bad blood. But recently, after the earthquake, that was something that brought the two countries together. Mm. Because many uh, many Dominicans went there to help. And many Haitians came to the Dominican Republic to get medical assistance and things like that. So that's something that brought people brought people together with natural disaster. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's very weird that there's two countries and one island. But it all has to do with history, just the way things happen in history. You know? It's like Korea, no separate. Yeah, separate, right? Like one little thing in history changes the entire the entire destiny of two people. Right? <laughs> so okay guys. Anything else? <laughs> yes. You said the Caribbean, Caribbean mm -hmm. Sea has a three big islands. Yes. But I I, look, I saw uh, four big islands. Four big islands? Puerto Rico and Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica. Yeah, I guess Jamaica. Jamaica is bigger than Puerto Rico, right? Jamaica is, you see it, Cuba, you see it under Cuba? You see that's Jamaica, right under Cuba. And then the Dominican Republic and then Puerto Rico. Um, I guess Jamaica, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's smaller than Puerto Rico, so. I don't know. Puerto Rico belongs to the US. So Puerto Rico is a commonwealth. So yeah, they belong to the US. <laughs> uh, Puerto Rican people are American citizens. They're US citizens. But they speak Spanish too, and they their culture is similar to Dominican Republic. Oh, that's right. Uh, but they are US citizens. Um, and then Cuba is independent. Jamaica, it, they speak English in Jamaica. And Mexico is right here, after Cuba. And then if you see up, that's Florida. That little thing from the top that's coming down, that's Florida. We have very beautiful nature, which I will get modernizing quickly. And, yeah, but it's still a developing country, though. Still many poor people. Uh, but luckily, we we've had good governments that have built a lot of infrastructure and helped out. I think the problem for Haiti is that they've had really bad, corrupt governments for many years. So that's all, that's not helping. Okay, guys, any questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. huh? One more? Oh, yes. Um, Japan is like a friend or brother to you. Oh, yeah, Japan. I wanted to mention Japan and the Dominican Republic. After World War II, the Dominican government said anybody who wants to come from Japan to the Dominican Republic can come and we'll give them free land. Right. So many Japanese people, many poor Japanese people went to the Dominican Republic. Im immigrated there and uh, started farming, farming rice, just like in Kukui. Uh, and today there are still many Japanese families. I have, I know people who are Japanese but are Dominican. So they, uh, their, their culture is Dominican but their background is Japanese. They have Japanese names, they look Japanese, but when they speak, they speak Spanish. So I know people like I, I'm friends with them. Um, yeah. 
Japanese people? Yeah. Uh, Japanese people are... The issue with the Japanese is that they were promised free land when they came, but when they came, the land wasn't very good. So I think their descendants are trying to get some money from the government. But it's only a couple families, so it's not a big issue. I think the number one issue in the Dominican Republic is the Haitian issue. Whereas for Haiti, for the Dominican Republic, the citizenship is different. Like in America, if you're born in America, you're a citizen, no matter where you come from. In the Dominican Republic, you have to have a Dominican parent to be Dominican. So the Haitians come to the Dominican Republic and they have kids there, but the kids aren't Dominican. They're not considered, so the kids can't get papers, and they can't get uh, ID, so they can't go to school, they can't go to university, but they're in Dominican Republic, but they're not considered Dominican because their parents aren't. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, but how they grow there in Dominican Exactly, that's what they're saying. They're saying, I was born here, my culture, I speak Spanish, my culture is Dominican, why am I not? So that's, that's the number one human rights issue right now. So the government has had problems with that recently, actually. Hey guys, thank you. Thank you.